Hey everybody, it's Dr. Matt here. Today I want to discuss a few things that have been on my mind, some things that I talk to about people, seems like uh, I repeat, in my, re repeat as far as emails and stuff that I send out. And so I figured it'd be better or best to address it in a video uh, because uh, like I said, it's just, it's, it's just easier for me. It has to do with bevel setting, sharpening your razor, um, uh, uh, touch ups on the razor, converting the edges, that kind of stuff. So. On my on some of my videos, I've said and have been questioned about several times. Uh, I've said that setting the bevel is a one shot deal. On my bevel setting video, I talked about it. I said it's a one shot deal, and I talked about the bevel being the entire edge to the spine, that whole entire plane, and making sure that that's flat and forming that three dimensional triangular prism, uh, the box of Toblerone that I, I, I believe that I had mentioned, and. That's what I, that was my definition of setting the bevel. The thing is, and what I keep running into is that most other people's definition of setting the bevel, it's a little bit different than mine. So let's get into this. Now you have to forgive me because I don't have a real fancy digital uh, 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 program to to do my drawing. So I'm going to do it on paper. So hopefully this will work. All right. So let's just assume that this is the entire razor edge, spine. All right. We talked about the bevel being all the way from the edge, or from the from the edge all the way down to the spine. This entire plane. Now I said that the the center part of that bevel is usually ground out from from being you know hollow grind, but that entire thing is the bevel. Now what I need to talk about, what I think most people are talking about when they say setting the bevel, they're talking about the edge part right here, just the edge. So what I'm going to do is show you. That's just this part, okay? So now when people talk about setting the bevel, what they're really saying is they're getting the tip pointy, like this, okay? They're just making it pointy. Me, simply, I call that sharpening your razor. You know, to me, my definition of setting the bevel is more analogous to getting the motor on your car pulled out, sending it to the machine shop, getting it machined, line board decked, and getting the, the, uh, the, the cylinders bored out and squared and everything set. You put it back in the car and you're good. Every time you need an oil change, you don't need to, to, to tear the motor out and get it remachined. Um, when people tell me that they have to reset their bevel, what they're really talking about is they're sharpening and they're making the tip pointy again, okay? So there's your pointy tip. Now, let's just take a typical scenario. You use your razor for a while, several dozen shaves, several months, whatever it is, and the, and the edge tends to go away. Well, this is kind of what it would look like, all right? Here's your edge. It's no longer pointy. The end's kind of bunged up a little bit, all right? So what we need to do is we need to sharpen this thing, what some people call setting the bevel. So what they're really doing is they're taking that edge, and what we do is, there's the edge, uh, what, what we do is we take, and we take it back to the stones and we have to knock off this metal here and the little green lines I have to make this thing pointy again. So we have to remove steel to bring the point back. I mean, when the edge gets crumbled like this, we can't just push it back out. You've got to remove the metal here. From the, from the sides to make it pointy again. Now that's what most people will talk about setting the bevel. Okay, so we'll go with that definition. That's setting the bevel, what I call sharpening, or just making it pointy again. Now, one thing I have to, to, to discuss here, and it's involving stropping in the edge and what's really going on. Now, when we make that edge pointy on the stone, when you take your razor to the strop, okay, right off of the stone. Now what I do is I have a linen strop, the fire hose, love the fire hose, and I'll do like 40 or 50, even some more passes than that on the linen or the prep strop, and then I go 100 on the uh, on leather. So what happens when we do that is we create at the edge, it really is no longer pointy, it creates something that we call a micro convexity, okay? Here it is. Here's the point. This micro convexity is formed from stropping. It's no longer pointy like that. All right. That comes from your linen, your prep strop, and your leather. They both form this micro convexity. So micro convexity is, is important because it, I believe what it does is gives the comfort to the razor. Um, as far as stropping, 
I'm not thoroughly convinced that we know exactly what it does, but I do know one of the things it does is it forms this microconvexity. If this, if this is the, the edge, what it does, it just barely does this, okay? Just barely, it actually does shorten it and just slightly increases that bevel angle there. Now, let me show you some, some pics. This is a scanning electron microscope. This is the bevel, the edge, to a point. I believe this is an 8K edge. You can see the perfect point that it comes to, or as perfect as an 8K can get it. Okay, so now what we do is we take and we strop this thing, and it looks like this. All right. Now, you can see what's happened. It's kind of very subtle is it's very just rounded towards the end. Now, I believe that this was done on a, a, a pasted strop, but regular stropping will do the same thing on your linen or whatever. It just does it at a slower rate, but it still micro-convexes the edge. Now, what I'll do show you here is you show them side by side. If you want to look at that, and you can see the difference as far as what that very subtle micro-convexity is. Now, what I want to show you here is what they did on this particular picture. Now, I realize that the, the, um, the resolution here is not as good on this particular picture. I couldn't get it. But you can see the white line is the, is the bevel itself. That's the, the, the inherent bevel. Let's say that's, what, 16 and a half degrees? Um, so the microconvexity is the darker part on the inside. Okay, so that's what happens when you strop. That's the microconvexity. Now, there's a scale marker here. This is one micron. You can see the amount of, of metal that's actually missing is fractions, fractions of a micron, okay? But it's still there. So here's my point. If this is the microconvexity, all right? So now what I want to talk about here is touch-ups. Now people say, what I want to do is I just want to touch up my razor. Well, I don't really think touch-ups exist and I'll explain why. When you do a touch-up or the idea or the theory or the thought process behind doing a touch-up is, you know, the edge has kind of gone a little way. What I do is and people say, I just take my finishing stone out, my codicil or whatever, and I just do about 10 passes on there just to crisp up the edge. Okay, well, let me explain to you why that's really not what you're doing. Okay, so if you were to take your edge, there's the microconvexity. Now, let's just say you were to take this edge, this razor, and lay it on the stone. All right, this stone is going to follow this bottom black line. It even follows the dotted green line here. Well, can you see what happens is that your edge is not fully on the stone. Okay, so if you want to touch this up, if you want to take and touch this thing up, what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to fully sharpen it. You got to bring it back to a point because once that thing microconvex is like this, you can't push it back up. Okay, so what you have to do is you have to fully sharpen it again. Okay, or setting the bevel. This much metal here has to be removed on both sides to get that thing pointy again. People say, well, it only takes me 10 passes to do it. How could that be? Well, that's all that you'll, that's all you'll need. Depend, you know, if that combination of stone and your razor, 10 passes, that's it. That's fully honed. That's a fully honed razor. You've recreated that bevel angle or set the bevel, okay? Um, now, I, on my video, I made a video called Maintaining Your Razor's Edge. Uh, it involved the 8K stone and the ILR. Now, people say to me, they've watched it, they go, Doc, I really love that video. It's a great video, but I want to, I want to, um, you know, full, I have to fully hone my razor. The edge is gone. I've used it for months and I really need to fully hone it. So I need to get a bevel setter. I need to take this thing down to 1K. Well, my point here and what, what I'm trying to say is that to do all of that is really silly to sharpen the razor. Now, 1K's bevel setters for doing geometry corrections, great. All I do right now, when I have a razor that I've set the bevel, made the geometry perfect, when I want to sharpen that if the edge goes away, 8K finish stone. That's it. All I need is the 8K in the finish stone. Um, anything lower, eh, 
I, I don't feel that I need it because my my feeling on this is the lower you go in the grit range, the greater chance you have of screwing up the bevel, of unseating the bevel, screwing the geometry up, maybe get a little this way, a little toe heavy, a little up, something like that. If you can do it on an 8K, why not? The least aggressive that you can go, the better. You know, I saw, I was watching this one video of a guy, he was honing his razor, and he says, you know, that the edge went away, so I need to set the bevel. So he goes down to the, it might even been a 600 or something like that. And he went through, this thing was like over an hour long. He went through, I, I lost count, it was 9 or 11 stones to redo this razor's edge. All the guy was doing was this, removing fractions of a micron. He ground the shit out of his razor from 1K to 2 to 5, 8, 9, 12. Three finishing stones. I was like, oh. And all I was thinking was, <laughs> if there's some poor guy watching this wanting to get into straight razor shaving, and he thinks, well, I know that I kind of have to sharpen these things. Let me see how to do this. And he sees this, he would just go, that's it. I'm done. You know, when we, we take and we, we sharpen these these razors, what we're really doing as we take and remove metal, let's just say this, this is the spine down here, as we remove metal, that edge just recedes every time, a little bit like that, a little bit, um, and the, the bevel angle is maintained, so it just kind of goes back like this and the, and the blade gets a little bit narrower every time. It's just microns, but that's what happens. But the thing is, when you use tape, <clears throat> what you're doing is this. It goes this way, this way, this way, this way, the spine stays the same width, so the edge starts to fall in on itself. Um, also, what I wanted to say regarding the micro convexity uh, and a touch up, uh, the only way that you can really do a touch up, as we most people would think of it, just need to kind of bring it around a little bit, is you would have to take a pasted strop because a pasted strop is the only thing that will go around the corner here. The pasted strop will go around the corner and give you that little bit of touch up. You can do a few passes on the pasted strop if you want to use pasted strop. I, I understand, you know, people, in, in my case, I use uh, natural stones. I don't mix the pastes and the natural stones. If I do one of those type of edges, a CBN edge, I, I, I'll do that. But that's just my, my personal thing as far as what I want to do. Um, all right, next thing I wanted to touch on was conversion. Uh, what is that? Well, what that is is when you when you have a, um, a a razor with a particular finish on. Let's just say it's a cortical edge, and you get that shiny, bright new Japanese stone, the JNAT, and you want to take an, that that cortical edge and make it a JNAT edge. Well, what you have to do is you have to convert it. You convert it from cortical to JNAT. Um, and the only way to do it, assuming that you shaved and stropped it, you have the micro convexity. What you have to do is you have to take it. In my case, I take it to the 8K. This is mostly what I do because I get different stones or just get bored with one edge. I do something else. Take it to the 8K, remove that much metal, take it to the finishing stone, and then I strop it. That's conversion. Uh, so when you saw me uh, uh, hone that razor with the ILR, I did an 8K the finished stone, the ILR, you can do your Japanese stone, your codical. I, I do them all the same way. Uh, so what I do is if you saw, this is this is the, the micro convex edge, you saw me take and drag it across the stone. What I did is I killed the edge, all right? So when you kill the edge, you make it flat like this, okay? I would think it makes flat. Some people say you just kind of curl the edge around. Anyway, let's just assume that it's flat. So what you need to do at this point <clears throat> is to sharpen it again or bring that thing back to pointy, we have to do this. All right, so I take it to the 8K, remove that much metal, get it pointy again. How do I know it's pointy again? Because I tested it on the, on the cherry tomato, the tomato skin. Uh, Someone tells me they use grapes, little tiny grapes, to test the skin on it. Actually, I tried it. That works just as well if you don't have tomatoes or you don't feel like... Uh, pulling one of the one of the good tomatoes out of the out of the vegetable bin. My wife gets pissed when I do that. Um, but yeah, uh, uh, just test it. So now you know that your edge is back. That's it. That's all that you need to do. Um, so if you have any questions about any of this stuff, feel free to email me, Doctor Matt, three fifty seven at hotmail dot com. Uh, enjoy your honing. Enjoy your sharpening. Enjoy your shave. Have a great day, guys. We'll see you soon.